2021 is going to be the third and final year of getting my bachelor's degree. And over these 15 years of trying to get a degree, get an education, I can 100% say that I have almost perfected my method of studying. And that is to work smarter and not harder. Now these tips are going to work whether you are in university or college. Some might apply to just university since that is what I've been doing for like the last three years and where I really did narrow down how to study my best. So the first step which I tell everyone and if you watch any of my other study videos you know this is my biggest tip and that is to always start from the beginning. Now what do I mean by that? After each lecture or whenever you have a free lesson or a subs lesson, even if it's at the end of the day, say you have a hectic schedule, summarize what you have learned in that day for each subject. If you have watched my how to make my study notes, you will see that I have taken nearly an entire 256 page notebook and summarized it into maybe 20 or 30 back to back blank pages of notes. If every day you go through exactly what you've learned in that day or make your study notes as well as go through whatever you have learned in that section or that term this far, you will be able to recall things much faster, avoid cramming and you will also be able to get a good sleep before your test instead of working until two or three o'clock in the morning. I don't even know the last time that I went past, let's say 11 or 12 studying for a test. And that is because I start studying from the first day that I start a new subject, a new course or a new quarter. Going along with this is to ask questions about things that you're unsure of from the beginning. Do not wait until you are 15 lectures into a section to ask a question you don't understand because there's a high possibility that whatever you learn in your first few lessons is what you are going to build on throughout your course or throughout the quarter. So rather fix whatever misconceptions you have in that time that you learn it, ask your teacher, go afterwards if you're really shy to ask questions in class or you know we have the internet now. Research and try and understand something that you don't understand as soon as you start something rather than waiting 15,000 years later to ask a question and finally understand it. Now, when I transitioned from high school to university, the lecturing and note-taking was very hard for me at first to kind of adjust to because in university, you have a lecturer, you have a textbook, and you have whatever they are showing on the board as well as maybe the extra notes that they are drawing on the board. And so you have like four different ways that you are trying to get information. And that is why it is really important to take down only what is very, very important. So if something is on the teacher's lecture slides, unless you have to link something up with what they are saying, don't write it down. Take down only what they are adding on as extra, what you think is actually important. I mean, if they're telling you the sky is blue, write down the sky is blue, not the fact that some scientist 50,000 years ago thought it was purple and then green, but then it was finally declared that it was blue. What teachers or lecturers repeat is obviously so important to take down because they're obviously repeating it for your benefit to one, know that a question or something is going to be asked or that it's a core concept to understand in the course or that it is something that must be drilled into your head. The other thing is to learn to just do diagrams and shorthand. Writing things in full hand or writing an entire paragraph, whereas you can rather make a flow diagram, will take up so much unnecessary time and space into writing down things and you will end up missing a lot of the things that come forth. So that's why in a lot of both my lecture notes and my study notes, I have condensed down things into shorthand. It sounds really tedious to do, but it will help in the longer run to keep your mind rather engaged with the lecturer rather than trying to just rush and write down everything. The third thing mainly applies to all my university students out there and that is if a lecturer does not work for you, do not waste your time. Now, I learned this in first year when I had possibly one of the worst teachers and lecturers that I've ever had in my schooling career. Just because this person could not dumb it down for a lack of better words. Rather, they taught it to us as if we already knew what was happening. And that's a really hard way to learn something that's fairly new. To think that you just understand it and now they're using all these fancy words when actually it doesn't make any sense to you. I think our class went from being like a thousand to like 200 students. And I was like, how can people people be so disrespectful and not go to the lecture but I realized in the end that I didn't learn anything in the four months that she was teaching us and 
I'm gonna be completely transparent. I was sitting to a near fail for my first year of algebra. And that is because I was still stuck in that high school mindset that if you are in class, you are in class. You have to be present all the time. However, my friends and I decided, you know what, this lady seriously is not working for us. She's wasting our time and we're not understanding anything. So instead of going to our algebra lesson, we used to go to our maths bowling and we would sit around a table and we would go through the textbook together for one. For two, we would take down notes from YouTube videos such as Khan Academy and Chemistry Organics or something like that is the name. Those two YouTube channels were so, so helpful in teaching us concepts that we actually just couldn't grasp in those four months. And we actually ended up getting it within 15 minutes. If you can learn something more easily by yourself, especially now in the period of technology, where literally every single ounce of knowledge out there can be found on the internet. You have to understand that if something's not working for you, try a different avenue. If you feel that you can teach yourself better than a lecturer, then don't go to the class and learn something better by yourself. Get ahead of the class even. That's what ended up happening with my friends and I, that we actually got ahead in the syllabus. And to show you that this worked is that our algebra marks go from 40s and 50s to around 80s and 90s. The fourth thing is to block your week. I started off with, you know, going according to whatever my work schedule said, but I would work anywhere between 10 to 12 hours a day on university. And after the first semester finished, I was like, my mental health really can just not handle being at a desk for that long and staring at a computer screen for that long. So what I started doing, I started blocking my week. What I mean by that is each day, dedicate a specific subject or a specific task instead of doing all three subjects every single day of the week what i did is i took my five day work or university week and i changed it into a three day working week so what i did is i had three subjects i had geography and i had two animal plant and environmental sciences courses what i would do with those three subjects is i would only take three days out of the week to focus on each subject and i tended to actually get a lot more done in those times because my brain was kind of just focused on whatever i was learning for that subject rather than worrying about the three other subjects the two other subjects that i had to worry about that day i had those three days which i focused on university and so the other two days in the week that i took off for myself is where I focus on my passions, which was my small business and YouTube. So blocking off your week and focusing on one thing each day gets so much more done. You get so much more free time to yourself and you absorb a lot more information. The fifth thing is such a common thing and that is to use links to memorize. This means using mnemonics or coined phrases, acronyms, abbreviations, or even what sometimes I do if I can't come up with what I've just mentioned is in my notes, I will do my highlighting in whatever color I have chosen to do for those notes. And within each two or three points, I would highlight one word in a yellow to stand out. And what happened with me after going through my notes over and over again today is I would associate an entire paragraph with that one word. This really helped me in matric to memorize all the history essays, which were between a thousand and a thousand five hundred words, because I would remember in, let's say, a paragraph, four or five words, and I would then recollect all of the things that I said relating to that word. Another way to do this is to visualize things or related to things that you you know so for instance i'm going to use again the whole thing with rosa parks if you forget where her name comes in you think okay rosa parks okay parks what parks types of vehicles okay there's cars there's buses okay a bus then you think oh rosa park was kicked off a bus which usually parks and that's what caused the montgomery bus boycott and the sixth tip is something that everyone says from teachers to parents to any other study youtuber is you have to do active studying it means making sure that you understand what you have taken or learned and making sure that you can apply it and an amazing way to do this is doing past tests doing exercises teaching it to someone that really has no idea what you're thinking about so i am lucky in my case that i have a small sister so i can ask her to come and sit and let me explain something to her and then I ask her to tell me what she got from what I taught and if it makes an association or if it goes along with what I've taught then I know that I've learned the concept well enough to teach someone which means you understand it enough to grasp it and 
give it to someone else. I did this a lot, especially last year when I did stats. I used up two whole books of just doing practice tests, practice exercises, and, and that was how I was able to memorize codes. This helps to make sure that you're not taking 30 days to understand one paragraph and trying to memorize it off by heart, but rather taking two or three hours in a day to do an exercise and make sure that you can apply what you've learned and knowing that it's kind of embedded in your brain. So those are my six tips to kind of ace this year and make sure that you are studying smarter and not harder and really utilizing your time to the best of your ability during this whole school year because if 2020 taught us anything is that you have to take time out for yourself and the only way that you can take time out for yourself is if you work smarter and you carve out time for yourself by minimizing how much time you spend on one thing. So let me know if these tips work for you. Let me know how you're kind of feeling going back to school within the next week or so. And so yeah, I hope that you guys have a wonderful week filled with lots of love, happiness, light, positivity, and hopefully a very, very good and successful school year ahead. Love you guys. Bye. It's been a long time. Thank you.